I like click subscribe, do all that. You know what time it is? It's Netflix time. This movie's called The Seventh Day. An inexperienced priest teams up with a hardened exorcist to stop the demonic possession of a young boy. But darkness lies where they least expect it. It's one of those horror possession movies that just came out. It's an hour and a half long. Spoiler alert. Let's get it. So it starts off in Baltimore, Maryland, October 8, 1995. My hometown, shorty. Ravens Nation, Orioles Nation, Terps Nation, bitch. And we got Pope John Paul II giving a speech at Camden Yard Stadium. Who's watching the speech on TV? This little guy named Peter and a guy named Father Lewis. And it's my nigga Keith David. What's goody? Be more representing on some demonic spirits with Keith David in it. And that's how we represent. So they're trying to get the evil spirit out of this boy named Nicky. I don't know why, but I think of that movie Lil Nicky with Adam Sandler in it. He tells Peter and Lewis that he's not the only one being possessed. They're all, all across the world. Since so the demons will gradually increase as he gives this fucking Joker smile. The mom's like, hey, do something. My son's being possessed. As the father and Lewis are looking at him like, what the fuck is going down? As Lewis is trying to make incantations, Nikki makes his mom cross start floating all by itself. And the cross at this point is pulling into her skin and shit. And right before Lewis finishes the incantation, the cross flies off and hits him right in his neck. And you can tell what happened after that. Five minutes into the movie, Father Lewis is done deal dead. Now Peter has to take over as a leader instead of a disciple. While all this is going down, Nikki's arm was burning up, skin bubbling and shit. And now all of a sudden we're in New Orleans present day. About 26 years later, we got this guy named Daniel getting his first exorcism job. He talks to a man by the name of Father Dunley. And right next to him is Father P Peter. Yeah, it looks totally different than he used to. We're from b -more to New Orleans. So basically he tells Daniel he's going to be working with Peter. Daniel comes off as real timid, nervous, and skeptical. But he wants to prove himself to the archbishops and all that. So now he's riding the car. Peter asks Daniel why you want to do this. He's like, to get rid of demonic spirits. But Peter's like, no, no, why do you want to do this? Then Peter tells him about his mentor, Father Lewis, and tells us what happened to the boy, Nikki. See, after Nikki's arm started bubbling, Peter tried to do the incantations. But bottom line is, Nikki burst into flames. He turned into straight fire and ended up dying. So then he asks him again, are you sure you're ready for this, Daniel? Daniel doesn't give an answer. So then they go to this shelter where all these homeless people live in tents. Peter tells her he's looking for an old friend. And they direct him to this guy standing in front of a fire. Talking to himself at first, but then he starts answering all of Daniel's questions. So Peter's looking at him like, all right, what you, what you gonna do? Unbeknownst to Daniel, he's got the wrong guy. Turns out it was actually the lady that was possessed. Daniel finds this out once Peter tells him to utter the name Ozima. She lets out a scream and blows away a bunch of tents in the area. Daniel's trying to get up, Peter's laid the fuck out. Then he sees her picking up and eating glass. Then all of a sudden, the blue, she has Daniel backed up against the fence. Holy shit, that's horrifying. Then Peter gets up and tosses her ass. Then Peter starts doing incantations. The power of Christ compels you and all that shit. It was somehow drawn out of her. He gives this guy he gives this guy money. And Daniel's trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. Peter's like, if you're going to be in this line of work, you got to be able to spot out the uh, demons. But I'm going to take you on your first mission. So he takes him to this house that's all boarded up with yellow tape. Peter tells him he'll be right outside, but this is something you got to do, Daniel. So Daniel goes inside the house, and he sees a family arguing about their son, Charlie, about making friends in his neighborhood. But the wild thing about this shit is, they're not even really there. This is all in Daniel's head. But he goes into another room and sees Charlie in there with a priest. Then out the blue, it just gets dark. Daniel goes upstairs, and he finds Charlie hanging onto an axe. A bloody axe as he walks right past him. But what does he see in the corner? Charlie's mom dead as shit. Then he goes through Charlie's room, looks under his bed, and saw Charlie coming after him for a second. He gets back in the car, all of a sudden it's daytime again. So the weird thing is, all these visions that he was seeing actually really did take place. But how the hell has he been able to see him? Then they go to the correctional facility where Charlie's being held at, and he talks to him one-on-one face-to-face. -on -one -face. Now Charlie at first is surprised that Daniel knows everything about what happened. He starts telling Daniel about there was another man present, and the first time he started losing himself with, with his friends at this spot called Skate City. But before he could tell Daniel anymore, he starts getting possessed again, and he jumps right on top of him. After that, the guards come. So Peter's like, like, yeah, I know this is going to be tough, but this is your case now. You got to be able to see this through. Daniel has his reservations about it, but he's still willing to go all the way through because he wants to help Charlie. So because the only clue they got is Skate City, that's where they go. As he go in, there's clearly nobody there. I think he saw one person on the skate rink, but I'm not even sure if we really saw him or he's seeing it or whatever. Then he's talking to Charlie's friends who just happen to be there and they're the only ones there at the skate rink right now playing Street Fighter and shit. Nobody called them or anything like that. They just happen to be the only ones there. Real convenient, right? The reason I say real convenient is because he actually is talking to them. This is not a vision or a flashback. So they take him to this little underground spot there, and they bust out a fucking Ouija board. Now listen, I had a Ouija board when I was little. This is something you don't fuck around with. So now they're going to record Daniel asking questions and using the Ouija board. He's trying to figure out if any spirits are still in this room. And he wants to know how to get up, and all of a sudden the lights start flickering. You're like, what the fuck is going on around here? He's starting to get possessed. What is this? And throughout the possession, he sees the visions of how Charlie killed his whole family. And then at the end of the vision, he sees himself all bloodied up with the axe in his hand. Got all the kids freaked the fuck out. He asked what kind of help he needed. The answer said no, and he spelled out evil. But they're trying to figure out if he even moved his hands or not, or was somebody controlling his hands. So now he goes back to the archbishop to show him the camera, because, you know, he wants to see that he got proof. And he lets him continue on with the mission to save Charlie. The only thing is they gotta hurry up and do it, because he's about to be questioned. If they send Charlie into a mental institution, it's lost. 
Then the lady at the front desk gives him a card for another priest to talk to. Then after that, they're ready to go see Charlie again. Charlie right now is in the interrogation room with a therapist, who at this point can't get Charlie to answer any questions. And then they let Daniel in the room. Then Charlie tells him there was a man with him, with a beard, long fingers, a coat, and some boots. He starts giving this description to this guy. But while he's doing that, he's making this fucking pencil move. The hell? Look at this shit. What is this? Or something like that. And he stabs the therapist in the hand with the pencil. He crosses his arms, then he starts floating in midair. It's like, the fuck? Then he tells Daniel about the night of the murder. Next thing we know, they get Daniel out the room with Charlie in there facing the wall. Then Charlie teleports to the window, looking at him dead in his face. All of a sudden, the lights start flickering and going black. Lights come back on, Charlie's gone. It's like, what the fuck? They send the police in there, and he's cutting all these niggas the fuck up. It's a done deal massacre. Next thing we see is Charlie fiddling with the door. Oh shit. Daniel starts running down this hallway while the lights are all flickering. It's the therapist at the end of the hallway. He's talking about he hasn't seen anybody. And Charlie pops out of nowhere, abruptly kills him. Then he walks down the hallway some more, sees Charlie. I'm like, oh shit. Then Daniel just hugs Charlie. He says, look, you can fight this, man. Now Charlie's looking off into the window. And he tells Daniel, there's the man I've been talking about. Daniel turns around. And he's looking at Peter. What the fuck? No, I scratched that. What in all the beef? My question is, if Peter's a man of the cloth, how can he be possessed by demons? Or could that have been another crazy vision that Daniel had? Well, anyway, they go back to the abandoned house, and they're ready to commence the exorcism. While Peter's away, he calls up Father Dunlay, and he's second-guessing Peter's motives. But Father Dunlay gives him some strange advice, starts laughing, and then the phone gets disconnected. I smell some inexplicable fuckery taking place! Now it's time for the exorcism. Charlie keeps spazzing out every now and then, but Peter's insisted that Daniel finishes up the exorcism. The power of Christ compels you, damn it! But when he's almost finished, he notices... Charlie's arm, his skin, his flesh is burning off too. Then he starts thinking back to Peter's story. Then he makes the decision to turn towards Peter. So yeah, I guess he figured out that Peter is actually the demon. He's like, okay, yeah, you figured me out, but you're still a coward. Now the blue, everybody disappears except for Daniel. He goes to a bathtub and finds Charlie face down. But then he looks down again and Charlie's not even in the bathtub. Meanwhile, the water looks like piss. And then what the fuck? How the hell are we able to see Charlie's family members behind him? Then they try to drown him in the tub. But then not really though because the demon voice pops out like yeah, he's just fucking with him. Then he goes down the steps. But then what the fuck is that? It scared Daniel and he fell down the steps. When he got up, he sees Charlie's deceased family sitting on the couch. But it's all Peter Peter playing mind games with him. See, the thing is, Peter was using Daniel as a vessel. See, the cantations really weren't working like that. Because Peter let Nikki die, Nikki's demons transferred into Peter. And if Daniel finished off the cantations, Charlie's devil would have turned would have did the same thing to P Daniel. So while Daniel was hoisted in the air, he ends up stabbing Peter in the neck with a cross. And I guess the demon escaped from his body. But then the devil inside the house started speaking to him like, Did you really think this is all over? This is just the beginning. He's trying to keep the voices out of his head. That forced Joker smiles being thrust upon his face. Look at him in the mirror. That shit looks insane. Somehow he controls it for the time being. He gets Charlie and gets the fuck out of there. He goes back to the Archbishop. The Archbishop gives him a list of all the students Peter then took on. And he knows he's not the only one that Peter did this to. He gets in the card at the top of his list. His father Dunleavy. So it's a different type of possession movie. It's not like The Exorcist the ring or anything like that i guess it could fall in line with one of those but all right the seventh day on netflix check it out like click subscribe do all that you already know what time it is look easy on the easy mister <laughs> big you got this slogan